I'm Jefferson Robbins with NCW Live TV. I'm joined here by David and Donald McCannell of East Wenatchee. Uh, David, can you tell me how old you are, sir? 76. And Donald, could you tell me how old you are? 76. The two of you are brothers, and that should make, should make you twins. Yes, that's right. Can you tell me about uh, where you were born and how you came to East Wenatchee? We were born in Haver, Montana, <clears throat> and uh, our parents lived in Chinook, Montana, which is 20 miles from Haver, which is where the hospital was. And then over the years, uh, you know, we've gone various places around the world and, um, and then moved here from Edmonds, Washington in 2014. And we are here to talk today about a relative of yours, and it's a gentleman that I don't believe the two of you ever met, but he must stand pretty tall in your family, Sergeant Arthur B. Summers. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about Sergeant Summers? Well, he was born in 1916 on the 30th of June and in Poplar, Montana, one of numerous siblings uh, uh, two sisters and three brothers, and uh, he joined the Marine Corps in 1936. I enlisted at Seattle, Washington, and then went down to, uh, I guess, Naval Operating Base San Diego or somewhere in California, and that's where he started his uh, career in the Marine Corps. Your uncle joined the Marine Corps before World War II? Yes and he saw service for about six years then. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me uh, what became of your uncle, ultimately? Well, in, um, on November 23rd, 1943, he was a Marine in the Battle of Tarawa, at the, what was the Gilbert Islands, um, and then was killed in action, along with more than 1,000 other Marines, and then, um, in short order, the uh, CBs buried basically all of these, all of the people that had been killed. And uh, his uh, particular grave, which all was hastily done, was uh, the, the, you know, the exact location was lost. And then he, he wasn't uh, found until uh, a number of years ago and was identified at uh, his remains were identified at uh, Joint Base uh, Pearl Harbor Hickam in uh, 2019. And so um, it's only in the last few years that we've been, you know, working on the repatriation to the, to the homeland. Now, you're, you two were born before your, I'm sorry, after your uncle's passing. And so you did not know him personally. Growing up, was he uh, still sort of a figure in your lives? Did you hear about him or, or feel like you had an understanding of him? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't. I, I thought uh, I heard of his name and I knew he was killed in action. And uh, my mother never, she was his sister and I, she never spoke much of him uh, throughout my life. I, I, I never really did know anything about him other than some of the basic details, uh, very elementary details. So, no, I didn't. Did your family, Don, assume that your uncle was lost forever? Mm -hmm. he, he was uh, officially uh, noted uh, as missing in action and non-recoverable. His body was misplaced when he was buried and a civilian organization called History Flight began looking for the uh, lost souls in 2009, and they used various methods, uh, aerial photography, I believe, looking for, obviously, disfigurements of the landscape and whatnot, and they did find uh, what it was called Row D of Cemetery 33. It was a kind of a lost, area and uh, and then he, his body was recovered by history flight in 2019 I believe it was the last of June or the first of July of 2019 but up until that point nobody had any idea where his body and others I don't know how many others there could have been a dozen more uh, were they were they were lost misplaced I suppose you could say <laughs> 
And Don, you told me earlier that when your uncle's remains were found, they were also found alongside a number of his belongings. Yes. And, yeah. and those have been returned to the family. Can you tell me a little bit about what kinds of things were found? Um, he had a uh, pocket knife that is like fully encrusted now uh, from being in the ground for more than 70 years. And he had coins from New Zealand uh, where, where he came from New Zealand to Tarawa. And those are, were sent to us along with his helmet. And uh, they, they, they actually sent basically everything, uh, including uh, what was left of his boots, which is only the soles. And uh, everything that was in the grave, including this uh, ring, which was on his finger, which may be a diamond ring. We don't know for sure. I don't think it is. And uh, yeah, there you go. we're going to have that identified. It, it's more than likely gold, and it's some kind of a stone. Was your uncle married? No, he wasn't. He, he died at age uh, 27. 27. No, he yeah. And uh, he went in the service at 20 and stayed in, was in till, till he died. When you were informed that your uncle's remains had been identified, what kind of feelings did you go through? I couldn't believe it. I was thinking, after all these years, it was something like 75 years, now you found him? I had long ago given up hope. He was officially listed as body not recovered, at which was like lost, and we thought lost forever. I, I almost don't believe, well, if it hadn't been for history flight, he would never have been recovered because they researched, they researched the situation, the, uh, the Army and the Marine Corps researched that, the situation of the lost bodies there and they never did find him. They obviously didn't have a clue where they were because things were so, so confused that they, they were never able to figure it out. And so somebody did, history flight. In the 80s, I had written to the Department of Defense uh, asking for a memorial marker, which I did get and installed in Poplar, Montana, and it's there today, and on the bottom of that it says, Tarawa, and uh, it and it's in the memorial section, not not where anybody is buried, right beside the flagpole. The mayor, when we arrived, the mayor came down and he said, "Put it right there." So we got our shovel out, literally, and uh, we dug a we dug a hole and we put that marker in about six feet from the flagpole, and there it is today. But the catch is. We never knew he was going to be, re his body would be recovered. So I was shocked. And while your uncle was in the service, he did have time to rack up a few commendations. And of course, as a slain service member, further commendation after his death. Can you show these to me and, and maybe explain some of what those medals are and what they represent? Uh, we'll have to look it up here. <laughs> uh, met, this is the Purple Heart. And then there's the uh, World War II medal. I see, oh, it's, they're nicely uh, labeled, of course. Uh, American Campaign, uh, United States Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, uh, China Service, he was stationed in, at the U.S. Uh, Embassy in Peiping, China. It's now called Beijing. At that time, it was called P-E-I-P-I-N-G. And so that's the China Service. He was in the uh, uh, the guard unit. They had horse guards for the consul uh, for the embassy, and uh, European American Middle Eastern campaign, and uh, Asiatic Pacific campaign. They're all listed in this book here, and but uh, but it does nicely say what what they are there. That's fascinating. The only heroism medal he got was getting killed. Other than that, he had campaign medals, which is great. You've been working together with, um, with the Department of Defense on the repatriation, and so your uncle will be laid to rest here in East Wenatchee. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit, Don, about the plans for that service? Uh, there's uh, 
it's uh, going to be open to the public and you know we hope that anybody who's interested would attend. It's going to be at 2 p.m. on August 30th at uh, the uh, um, Evergreen Memorial Park in Mausoleum, which we have driven through. It's really a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. The last details will be coming together shortly. I guess in a, another couple of weeks, I'm probably going to be having quite a few phone calls and emails, and there's an awful lot of people involved. And you expect your uncle to be laid to rest with full honors? Oh, yes, yes. He's going to have the honor guard, and they're, they've spoken numerous times about that, and I guess that one is they're going to get some people together out of, I think, Seattle for that and come out this way. Is there anything you think people should know about the efforts that it took to make this repatriation possible? It seems like a, a huge project going back decades. <clears throat> I, I would give uh, the main credit to History Flight, the volunteer organization that steps in and you know attempts the you know to identify if someone is in the military and and then I guess the military gets involved. Would you like to see a, a good public turnout for the funeral of your uncle? Yes I would be, because it shows respect for for service people.